Diddy and Dixie are absolutely amazing. How you doing, Bob? What's going on? How are you? I love this enclosure so much. Because you could just see the outside so good. It's really cool. What's going on, girl? Of course, this is the hot spot up here. In the wintertime, it gets a little bit cooler in here. There's no doubt about that. Why is there boards on the building across the street? What the heck is going on? What is going on? What in the heck is this all about? It's like medieval times over here. I don't even know how you get this. Oh, there's a lock on it. There's hinges. At least, you know, first I thought that maybe like the city boarded it up. I'm like, oh, what did we do wrong? Let me call Lori and find out if she knows what's going on with this. Did you notice that there's boards on the door across the street at the at new aquarium? I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know, you didn't see it? The only thing I know is that I'm bored of this conversation. Do you know nothing? So Lori literally didn't know anything either. Now, I know that demolition on the building is supposed to start tomorrow, the complete destruction, but I don't know anything about this. Maybe they've already started demo inside, but I can't get in, so I can't even see. So hopefully I can get in touch with my contractor. Maybe it'd be nice if he actually gave me a key to get into my own building. So let me call him right now. Damn, went to voicemail, that sucks. I don't know what's going on here. See if there's any like key. Oh wait a second, check this out, check this out. So there's a lock box. I'm assuming the key's in this lock box. The problem is I don't have the code to get into the lock box. I'm gonna call Matt again. Gotta blow him up. I know he's probably pissed off, but I'm gonna blow him up again. I don't care. Hey, what's going on, Matt? Yeah, yeah, sorry to bug you, dude. I noticed that the front door is like all boarded up and stuff like that, and I see a lock box. Do you have a code for that? All right, got it. All right, <laughs> thanks, dude. All right, I was freaking out, man. All right, cool, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon, man. All right, bye. There's two keys in here. Don't know what that's all about. So I hope you guys like the new entrance to the Reptarium. I think it's gonna look really nice. Welcome to the Reptarium. Pretty grand. It doesn't look like they really did anything. They obviously took the doors off. This and they busted that whole wall out. So they were going anyway, so it doesn't matter. So this all comes down to, here's the remnant of that automatic door. So if anyone needs an automatic door, you can have it. But uh, yeah, it doesn't, oh, we got, oh, look at this. We have a new toy. I don't know how to get in. Oh, look at this. Ready for construction. Ooh. Like I mentioned, it looks like tomorrow is the day where we're gonna start bashing things out, making this place look a lot different. There's no doubt about that. And guess what, guys? We haven't even started demo. I'm already bleeding. Go figure. I have a feeling I'm gonna be bleeding a lot when we get into this. So cool to walk around here, you know, and just think about it. We have like a lot of layout already kind of planned. So we're getting close to kind of final layout. I'll share that with you when we have the actual drawings for it. I'm working on it. I think it's gonna be absolutely amazing. Interesting enough, these two tanks here, you know, obviously 20 foot long, they're actually gonna go back to back. So these are what they call bullnose, right? So bullnose on one side is this rounded here. So they're round on one side, round on the other side. What we're gonna do is right at this pole right here. There's actually gonna be one that goes this way and one that goes this way. So there's gonna be basically almost like 40 foot of tanks. When you're standing here, you gotta remember, they're gonna be on stands that are about three foot tall and they're five foot tall, so it's eight foot. So when you stand here, it's gonna be 40 foot long of an eight foot high fish tank. And you can walk around and see the other side of it. Almost like a fish wall. A big, beautiful wall. But you know what I have to ask myself is like, why do I want an aquarium? Locking it back up. So I guess the reason why I'm obsessed with aquariums is that that's where my love of reptiles starts. Belle Isle Aquarium down in Detroit when I was just a little tiny kid, I went to and they had a ball python on display and I absolutely fell in love with reptiles from that moment on. And I guess I'll be honest with you, I really didn't realize it, but I've been obsessed with fish ever since too. I certainly have been going to a lot of aquariums lately because I absolutely have rekindled my love of aquariums. And this is the other local aquarium that's in the Detroit area. It's really a cool place and I always say that I'm not trying to hurt this business at all because it's just a different experience, right? When you come to most aquariums like this that is absolutely gorgeous, really good, well done, there's just not a lot of like things to do other than to look at aquariums where we're definitely gonna have a tremendous amount of experience that can keep you occupied for hours and hours. And coming to places like this and all the places I've traveled all over the country to aquariums over the last six, eight months gives me ideas, things that I like and things that I don't potentially like. I really like this.
take a look at this puffer fish right here. Absolutely incredible. I like this tank a lot. I just like the whole theming of it. I think it's really, really cool. Take a look at this panther grouper right here. I mean, it's so cool. I remember when I worked at a fish store when I was like 15 years old, we used to sell these. They were little small ones. They're really cool. Again, ideas that just keep coming to me. Fish that I wouldn't have thought like, hey, maybe we should put them in. Now I'm gonna put panther groupers on the list of things I think we need to have. This is kind of similar to what I'm thinking about for like the Predator freshwater tank, which is a little bit lower top because we want people to be able to feed it. We don't want to be too low where people are putting their hands in. But I like this kind of size, you know, probably something like a 5,000, 7,000 gallon tank, something like that. It just wheels are turning and I love coming to these places just to think things out. as we've been designing the aquarium is like whether you do these like little areas that are kind of like small rooms with enclosures in it or do you have some areas that are big that seem more expansive it's really difficult because a lot of aquariums do this where it's kind of like a path that you walk through and you don't really ever get this like grand area I'm kind of thinking we may want to do at least a couple areas that are really wide open so it feels a little bit bigger instead of having like little room little room little room little room i don't know you know again keep on going back and forth let me know in the comments when you go to a place like this how do you feel do you like it when it's kind of guided through little areas with just a few exhibits in it or do you like it when you walk into a room and there's like tons of big spaces it's really six one and a half dozen the other and we're still not quite sure which way we're gonna go if i come up and i fall off that's on me if i fall and i sell out that's we that's why i take my time before i make my mind Looks like Lori's been here. The ray tank that we're gonna make is gonna be similar size to this. It's just gonna be a little bit different because obviously it's awesome to look at, but you're not able to feed them, you're not able to interact with them or anything like that. So of course, you know, the similar size to this, but the difference is, is that, you know, there'll be straight walls and of course you can get in and swim with them, you can feed them, pet them and stuff like that. The interactive side is just gonna be good. But I do like this exhibit a lot. It's just that, you know, I like the interaction part a lot more. I love cylinder tanks. There's just something that's just so awesome about them. We're gonna have a lot of cylinders. This is actually a six foot cylinder. We're going to have some eight foot cylinders. Obviously a 25 foot cylinder for sharks. Just cool, man. I tell you, it's just, I get, oh, I am so excited, guys. And make you feel like you did it just to obtain your goals. Oh yeah, it's good when you get it, but it don't last that long. These little guys down here that are poking out are called garden eels. And I don't know why. I love them. There's a couple more over here poking out. Every time I see garden eels, I get excited. Probably because they remind me of little snakes or something like that. Definitely going to have a bunch of garden eels. There's no doubt about that. And I do this like seven days out of the week. Black tip reef sharks, one of my favorite fish. I love them to death. So we're definitely gonna have black tip reef shark tanks. This enclosure here is probably the coolest thing at Sea Life. There's no doubt about that. Not probably, it definitely is. This is just one viewing panel of about five viewing panels. This is amazing. Unfortunately, we're not gonna have something this big because it's ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I gotta show you the tunnel. Something I'm definitely gonna strive for in the future. So this is the tunnel I was telling you about. This is just an absolutely gorgeous tank. I mean, you can see on this side, this side, there's a bunch of different viewing Panel. But this is something that unfortunately we just weren't going to be able to do. This tank probably costs over a million dollars just for this one tank. More importantly, it takes up so much space. Definitely in the future when I do a bigger aquarium, which is something I hope I can do. This is something I'm striving for is a, a big tunnel like this. We've got a big nurse shark up here. With, like I said, blacker, green shark. We've got giant groupers. We've got rays in here. There's just so many fish. It's absolutely incredible. There's no doubt about it. Bat rays, clown nose rays. I mean, these guys are amazing. Yeah. You know, I can't do everything the first time, but this is definitely something to strive for in the future. I had to earn my stripes so I don't have to work no night. Like I said, I get ideas from places, and you can actually change the color of the jelly with this, these buttons here, which is really simple. These are just LEDs that change color. You just have the color switch here, so definitely I'm going to do this. And we're actually going to do a big, like, probably six foot cylinder, eight foot tall of jelly, so it's going to be really, really cool. And then you'll have the opportunity to change the color. I think it's going to be awesome. I was feeling rich, but we turned out wrong. Remember when I was
was down in Texas and I talked about that bridge tank that I bought. Look at this beast here. Definitely looking at this one. This is actually eight foot cylinder, eight foot tall. It's not on a stand, so it'd be just as tall as that one. And then see this one right over here? That's actually a six foot cylinder there, but there would be actually two of those six foot cylinders. And then this is what they call a bridge tank. So it would actually sit up top. So you would have an aquarium on this side, bridge over your head and an aquarium on that side. This is actually the bridge tank right here. This exact thing. We actually are going to have this, not this one, but one just like that where there's a cylinder, there's a bridge over here and there's a cylinder over here and take a look at this and this is going to be me at some point having to dive the tank to clean it up how cool are those so we're actually in a rainforest cafe which is one of the coolest cafes if you haven't been you got to go to these things. look at the theming in here ironically enough i have two of these tanks too these are what are called s tanks they're eight foot long three foot deep and four foot tall and they have this s curve to them like this i actually bought two of those too so i have the bridge tank and i have the s tank it's almost like i could start my own rainforest cafe and although i love going to every aquarium every zoo i just enjoy it so much. The fact is, is that, you know, although that place is themed out and absolutely gorgeous, love it, we walk through in about 20 minutes. You know, you could probably spend a half hour there with kids, you know, with a few kid things, maybe a little longer. You know, I'm all about the experience. You know that. Our place, we want to be able to, you know, you can hold reptiles, you can feed reptiles, you can feed fish, you can go swimming with the stingrays, all kinds of interactions that can keep you there for two, three hours, and then you even want to come back for more. So when I go to places like this, I love it to death, and I get so much inspiration from it. At the same time, I want to be able to have such a higher level of experience than places like that because like I said, $27 and we spent 20 minutes and we had seen every single thing. And this is like the fourth time I've been there in six months and I've enjoyed every single time. But literally, I typically spend 20, maybe 25 minutes there. And that's the only bummer to the more traditional aquariums and even the more traditional zoos. One of the enclosures that we're going to basically almost duplicate across the street just because I love it so much. This enclosure will stay here with Ariana and then Verde will actually come over to here. The only difference is, is that this will be a little bit more extended out. So I want more water area. So we'll probably have like this flat area come out to like here before we get into that octagon thing so that there's just that much more water space. So instead of maybe 200, 250 gallons, we'll have something more like four or 500 gallons for Ivy. And look at Ariana actually shed out. She's absolutely looking beautiful back there. And she's growing like a weed. And of course, Ivy is in shed right now. So she'll be shedding out here in another maybe four or five days. Well, I love Anaconda so much. So this is definitely going to be one of the focal points when you walk in the Reptarium across the street. The hard part is really the planning part. It's the part that's driving me crazy. When we did the Reptarium, you know, we didn't exactly know what we were doing either. We knew we wanted cages over here, but I remember even like the center aisle. We didn't have that real plan. We kind of just went on the cup and just started to do things. And it's really difficult until you know what you're doing. Now it's a little bit of a different situation. We need to know where everything goes because it's a much different build than obviously the Reptarium And is. that's the part that's so frustrating. I just want to get going, guys. I want to go. Yeah, the demo is going to be great and the front facade is going to be great. But once we have the planning made out where every single enclosure, every single tank is, then that's when the fun begins. You didn't start to see it come to life. But we're nowhere near that at this point. We still have probably another month and a half or two months of planning before we get to a point where we really know what is going on. It's driving me absolutely out of my mind. For now, I guess I just have to stare at my aquarium down here and my beautiful fish. And the thing about aquariums and the setup across the street is that it's really permanent. With reptiles, you can move the cages around. You can redo things. Once you set an aquarium, because the piping is literally in the ground, cement and into the ground. You can't move it. You can't do anything. It is there. The planning phase is so crucial to make sure that you know where every single aquarium is going to be so that you can do all the plumbing and piping and setting everything. So I can't wait till this part is over and we can just start rocking. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone and I promise. Ready for construction. Woo! Thank you.